right, we have another project, as usual. This is the Zenith chair side rig. Always wanted one of these. I love the cabinet. Just a really cool cabinet. Chassis is nothing particularly special, but the cabinet is very cool. And here we have a missing knob, or actually it's the incorrect knob, but I can survive. Uh, cabinet looks pretty good. I think it was probably refinished, but a little chip here, I can patch that if I care. Uh, it's pretty good though. I mean, I don't really need much of anything. Um, power. And this is not a shutter dial tuning, which still turns somehow. Uh, I was told it works, so you know that you know how that goes. Um, I was told it works. Then when I actually got there, they said, "Well, I haven't plugged it in in a couple of years." Then I was loading it in my car. Yeah, I haven't plugged it in at least ten years. So. It doesn't work, but that's fine because we'll we'll get it going. Um, anyway, it is not a shutter dial; it's the backlit dial, which is kind of nice, but uh, also you know it's not as cool, but still it's it's nice. Uh, the cabinet is what's special here. You know, it's just such a great design. I'll try to give you a. You know, it's a really nice, streamlined, modern design. Not Art Deco. This is purely streamlined modern. You can actually see here's a table we have, very similar design, and it was made around the same time. So this is a 1938 model. So here's the Zenith chair side chassis. You can see it's mounted on this piece of wood. I'm gonna have to unscrew it and then we'll remove it. Um, pretty good shape. Do not ground antenna. Well, that's pretty obvious. I think you'd have to be stupid. You never know. Can't uh, put it past people. Anyway, um, got to remove the chassis now, and uh, we'll have a look underneath. I think it's been worked on. All right, here's the chassis. It's definitely been worked on. You can see that blue capacitor right up here. That's a replacement, as is that one. The original filter capacitor is in here uh, at the top. And I can't really see, is it hooked up? Yeah, it still looks like it's hooked up. So that's something they used to like to do back in the day is just leave things connected. That is a professional taping job there. That's how you fix a radio. You've also got this capacitor here that's been replaced. I love these chassis. They're nice and big and very easy to get to everything on. So this will be really nice to work on. Quality is decent. It's not the best, not the worst. It still has the original tuning belt, which I'm like in complete shock about because they never last. Um, yeah, I mean, really... Nothing too crazy. I do want to check that can dome. Uh, usually I change these can domes out. Um, the exception is for some of the six tube radios like this one. You don't always need to, but we're gonna check it, make sure it's still okay. So I just checked the can dome. It's, you know, relatively close. It doesn't need to be exact, so it's close enough. I'm looking here at what they did for the electrolytics. It looks like they left the old ones in circuit. They also have a little bit of rust on the inside. Uh, corrosion, I don't know, I might clean that up later. Uh, there's not a lot of capacitors in here. Okay, put a little oil in there, at least the, um, uh, for the, to loosen it up, just a little bit of penetrating oil. I'm gonna put some of this on here as well. This is that Zoom spout oil, which works really well for this. Just do a little there. Just see that should 
Yeah, that's turning pretty well. I cannot believe that it still has its original dial belt. I find that incredible. Um, by now, they're usually completely gone. So that's, that's better. Uh, we have the volume, which is a little bit... Put a little in there, too. So convenient, because you can... Yeah, there we go. And then I'll just grab some contact cleaner and we'll spray that. Okay, that should be good. I love the names of some of these parts. Little American. These days it would be little Chinese. If you look at this one, this is called a beaver. Don't know if I want a beaver in my radio, but someone did. I think we change the capacitors and it will probably work as long as the speaker's okay. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna start, we're just gonna go all in. Okay, part way through this. I got about five or six, six capacitors changed. I removed the electrolytics, but I kept the, or one of them because I kept, it was in the way. I kept the wires, stubs there. The positive goes to this speaker. Um, so I think that's the second one. Uh, I think what I might do, because I really want to keep this nice and neat, is I might put the old, uh, might open the old electrolytic can and just replace the capacitors in that. Would have been smart before I started changing the capacitors to check out the speaker, make sure it's good. This uses a field coil. You can see it right in there. So we will check the output transformer first. I think oh, I heard a little pop in the speaker. That looks about right. Okay, so that's that part. And then we'll check the field coil. It should be, I don't know, what does it say on it? There you got 1250 ohms, so. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so these field coils, uh, just so you know, if you're ever measuring one, they don't measure exactly what they say on them. Um, that's because it's the warm reading. So once it's been on and it has current flowing through it, it goes up in resistance. So that's when they measure it. And that's why it says 1250 instead of a thousand. So that's fine. It'll, it'll do the job. Uh, close that. The next thing here is a couple capacitors up at the top. There's like three or four left. Last I'll do the electrolytics cause that involves a little bit of, uh, removing things and so on. So that'll be the last thing. All right, we have changed all the paper capacitors. Um, I always like to put these sleeving, you know, this This was not on most of them from the factory, but um, when I've done this, I've figured out that it's very easy to allow a couple wires to touch and, you know, whatever else, and you can be chasing your hair for seven hours trying to figure out where something's shorted because something's barely touching. So this you know, does two things. It saves me time, you know, when I'm trying to troubleshoot something that's shorted. Uh, obviously the goal is not to have that happen, but it, it certainly, if there's sleeving over it, it prevents that. The other thing it does is it prevents if anything moves in the future. Um, if something moves, it won't short. And then thirdly, it just looks really nice and neat and professional. So if I ever want to sell this radio, someone will look underneath it and say, oh, someone did a decent job. So there's that. Now, to get this capacitor out, I have to remove these two bolts. Now, what I like to do typically is connect two capacitors together. Um, these are electrolytics. There's a 20 and a 10. And what I'll do is I'll figure out what colors the wires are supposed to be. Now I see the uh, one of them, I believe it's the 20 goes red, black. So black is obviously negative. So I'll put a black wire and a red wire, easy enough. 
And then the other one will be, I don't know what colors they are, but I'll figure it out. So we have the old capacitor out. Now note how this has an 8 and a 14. Schematic says it's a 20 and a 10. So just to tell you how precise in these things are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy and this guy. This is a 10 at 500, if you will focus today. Focus. And this is a 22. Where is it? 22 at 500. So um, keep in mind the reason I'm using 500 volts, and you should too, is that the 5Y3 and 5Y4 that this uses, a 5Y4, uh, same tube as the 5Y3, just a different base, it you know tends to heat up more quickly than the rest of the tubes, and the B plus likes to just go way up. So when you first power it on, the B plus could be 475 volts easily, maybe more. And yes, a 450 rated capacitor will be fine and it will work and it will work for years, but a 500 volt rated capacitor will work for a few years more. So that's why we are doing what we're doing. Um, but I love how this device is so much bigger than those and, you know, easily it will just stick right in there. I'll just put some glue on it and away we go. So here's what we've got here. This is what you do. You glue them in there. It's not going to come out. I've done this before. It's not coming out. So this is these Zenith capacitors. If you see these, right, just like this, there's actually a, a paper. Um, well, it's a, it's not a, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's not a liquid filled can like some of the older ones. It's actually a dry electrolytic, which are some of the best of uh, the old types of capacitors. Um, anyway, this is pretty easy to do. Then, you know, you can pull this off and replace them again if you want to. But it just makes it a lot neater if you have it inside this can. So it's back in place. Just have to wire it up. I left the old wires attached here so I could see where to put them. Here's a red one, right? Red. That's no, not red. This one's red. So the red goes there and so on. Well, we have changed all the capacitors. Wired up the electrolytics. See, this looks much neater than having electrolytics dangling all over the place. Uh, you know, if I can do it this way, I will. If I can't, it's fine, but, uh, you know, worth trying. And um, next thing we have to do is change the cord. So, you know, the question being, do I throw this cord back on it and just fix this terrible mess, or do I put a better cord that... I might as well put a new cord on it. Um, might as well. I mean, I'm, I've already gone this far, and this is a nice set, so I'll, I'll go the extra mile. So we're just kind of going through this a little. I'm just going to do a couple little quick things like put a new dial bulb in here. Now, one thing to keep in mind that a lot of people get wrong is these need a 47 bulb. This is a 47. Now, the um, a lot of people will put a 44 in here. That does a couple different things. It draws a little too much current on this small transformer here. The other thing that it does is it heats up this dial cover and the little plastic piece that's inside here which you can't really see there it is and it burns through it so you got to use a 47 on these backlit zeniths so notice the speaker is not plugged in because it doesn't need to be i removed the rectifier put a small bulb in here and what we're going to do is power this up slowly I don't need to, but I'm going to just because in case there's any problem. Um, power this up slowly and see what happens. Uh, should get a very dim light from this bulb. It should kind of die off. 
uh, shouldn't really do much of anything because the rectifier is removed, so there's no B+. Plus. What I'm trying to do is see, is there a problem with the transformer? The definitive test. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And I have the power switch on. I'll have that on. And the little bulb lights up a little bit. And then you can see it goes very dim because the tubes are warming up. There we go. So that looks pretty normal. I'm going to say there's no issue with the transformer. I'm going to shut that off. Okay, good. So the next step is the exciting step of seeing if the radio is actually going to work. So we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to hook up our meter, put the rectifier in, plug in the speaker, because this does use a field coil. It needs that. And then we're going to slowly power it up and see what happens. Oh boy. Okay, so here, we're, here we are. We're going to go ahead and power this up. I'm going to turn that on. And this is on zero volt. Go ahead and give it five. That's actually 15. It's doing something. This is good. Give it 20 volts, 25 volts. I think B plus is about 250 to 280 volts. So we'll see what happens. Or 30 volts. Yeah. Beginning to go positive. That's good. We'll just give it a minute. The other reason we do it this way is because when you put new capacitors in, you want to kind of form them, right? So you basically start them up slowly, and that will ensure that they are uh, going to last a bit longer than otherwise. Now I have this set up to and connected to the second filter capacitor. So that's after the field coil. We're at about 40 volts right now. So what'll happen here is the voltage will go up until it stops and then it will start going back down as the tubes start conducting, as you can see. So I'll increase the voltage, we're at 45 volts. Or actually, 50. Never mind. Sorry. This is good. 60 volts. 60 volts. Almost at 70. 75. Oh, I hear something. Goldsmith and Arenado to face Carlos Carrasco here in the first inning. Brendan Donovan on a six-game hitting streak, batting 259, left-hand batter. Carrasco mm, ready to going up. the game. Right down the middle, a call of strike at 93 mile an hour fastball. And it's nothing in one to Donovan. He's got six homers, 17 runs batted in. Went two for five yesterday. And the 0-1 from Carlos is lined the other way, slicing towards the line, over goes Kenny. He won't get it, and it's going to roll to the wall. You know it's summer when there's baseball, so it's nice. I do love that. So a slicing fly ball down the left field line turns into a 95 volts. Uh, Canna's first step was actually in and over, and really this is one that he had to step back and over first, and it might have cost... Yeah, uh, ball be very dimly lit. This is good. 245 volts. Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt, quite possibly a future Hall of... 33 RBI, seventh most hits in the National League. Seems to play fine. Right banner with a lot of power. Carrasco stares at Donovan at second, still staring. Looks over again. Now the pitch to Goldschmidt is a curveball. Okay, we have it working. So uh, that's kind of cool. No major catastrophes. So what's next? Well. The first thing, and probably the most important thing, is getting this dial belt fixed, because this belt, somehow, I don't know how it's working still. Uh, it's pretty incredible, actually. Uh, that needs to be replaced. That's going to last for all of a few a few days, and then it will just die. So 
we need to get that replaced. So I've ordered, there's a gentleman that does these dial belts and he does them exactly to size from the original specs and they're, they're very good. So I've ordered some, um, I've ordered one of those for this set. Uh, so that'll be here in probably a week or so. And then the other thing I want to do is that this dial needs to come apart. So that needs to come off, the, everything needs to come off, that needs to come out, and then I need to clean up inside that. That will give me the best color for and the most uniform lighting for the backlight. Um, a little more cleaning. You can see there's some dirt in there. So I can do a little more cleaning there. A little cleaning inside. Aside from that, uh, that's probably about it. I mean, other things I could do would include testing the tubes. Unless I have a performance problem, I'm probably not going to bother. The other thing I should do is replace these little inserts, the little plastic things there, so that prevents the dial face from getting damaged by the dial bulb. And aside from that, I mean, we're in pretty good shape. I think this set is, uh, is coming along as well as I could have hoped. Okay, we are aligning this guy today. We got the dial belt working. I'm gonna tune off of the station. Have a capacitor hooked up in series with my meter. I have my uh, meter, my signal generator. I have it on 455. It is so humid. I see like little pieces of mold growing on stuff. Anyway, uh, we are going to just do the alignment. So. 456, I'm sorry, so we're, we're going to 456, okay. So let's start with this one. That's pretty good. Okay, that's pretty good too. So now what we'll do is we'll go here, we'll turn this down, actually. Uh, put that, and then we'll do it again. Oh, yeah, it's getting stations, so that's fine. Okay, we're just gonna test this 6F6. The audio is a little distorted. Let's see what it tests like. Dead. Okay, it is dead. So I've got a 6V6, which is close. It'll still work. Actually, it'll be a little easier on the transformer. So I might try that next. Okay, this is a new, well, new used 6F6. Let's give it a try. Yes, we are good. So that tube, I'll pull out of here, and I'll put that in the radio. So now we should have a good set of tubes in here, and hopefully it'll play better. Audio is still destroyed. Sounds pretty bad, actually. I'm going to shut that off. I think, I mean, I can go under here and check some voltages, but I'm also a little lazy. So I think the next step with this is to try swapping out the audio driver tube and see if that does anything. I mean, the only other cause uh, it could really be is there's a resistor. Well, I mean, it could be a lot of different things. It depends on where this distortion is being introduced, but it's likely to be in the audio section over here. And there's a resistor that uh, goes from the, um, it's basically sets the bias on this audio output tube. And I, I thought I checked it and it was okay. But if it's way off, I mean, it certainly could be the cause. So I can check that. At Gilgo Beach. 535 at WCBS. 
court, a federal judge has rejected Mr. Trump's bid to move the hush money case to federal court, saying the former president failed to meet a high legal bar for changing jurisdiction. Meanwhile, so it seems to be working now. Uh, what I did was I changed the resistor that goes to the, um, uh, the cathode uh, of the output tube. And that helps set the bias. Basically, what it does is it connects between, well, it's another resistor and so on from the negative part of the power supply to the cathode of the tube. And it uh, allows it to create um, bias between the grid. And anyway, uh, that was a little off. It wasn't too off. But what I noticed is that when I heated it up with my soldering iron, it went way, way out of tolerance. And I thought, okay, this tube's gonna get pretty hot right over here. And it's gonna get hot, and it's gonna heat that resistor up. And as it plays, it's going to, you know, go crazy. So anyway, I changed that. I also noticed one resistor which looked burnt to me, and I just went ahead and replaced it. Uh, looks like it was probably from a leaky capacitor or something in the past. And then the other thing I noticed was uh, there was another resistor which went between uh, that cathode resistor and the negative of the power supply. And that was, you know, 50% high. So I figured I might as well just change it while I'm doing it. There's a few others that are probably out of tolerance, but it, the thing is it works and it sounds okay. So we're getting somewhere with it. I think this oscillator tube might be weak. I don't have another one. This intent was meant and that the trees are usually pruned this time of the year. And many. Oh, yes. That may be true. Financial group. Two years. Oh, they forgot that one too. Call me where. Call me when From diehards to first timers. Jim Green welcome. Humid. There'll be a few afternoon showers and thunderstorms with a high below the mid 80s. Friday, more showers and thunderstorms and humid. Sounds pretty good for what it is. It's just, I think, like I said, the oscillator is a little weak, which, you know, if I can come up with another 6A8, that's good. I can put that in. These are commonly go bad. It's basically these three tubes typically are bad uh, with the output tube being the most likely and the oscillator probably being the second most. The 6A7 and 6A8, I seem to replace a lot of them. Anyway, it's done. Sort of. I gotta clean it up and then put it back in the cabinet. But uh, we're definitely, definitely somewhere. Oh, good evening. I'm oh, Jeff we have McKinney. a radio. As expected, the MTA today approved a fair hike. A single subway Sounds. and bus ride is going from two seventy-five to two dollars and ninety. Now forty-eight and forty-eight back to five hundred. Angels. That matter was a short stop, and he is the lead off hitter. Weird. Tony Anthony is batting second, and he is the DH. Taylor Ward is in left field batting third. Mickey Moniak as the so center fielder really batting right cleanup. Now. Playing first base today and uh, batting fifth is Eduardo Escobar. Hunter Renfro is in right batting. The Senate Judiciary Committee will vote Thursday to advance a Supreme Court ethics bill following reports justices accepted undisclosed station. gifts. Ranking Very member clear. Lindsey Graham slammed Democrats for pushing the legislation, arguing it's unconstitutional. Base. Stocks are Point finishing base. higher again on Wall Street. More from Liz Warner. Stocks climbed as the corporate earnings like season rolls on. Verizon, personally. Warner Brothers Discovery, and Sirius right. XM Holdings were among the biggest winners during today's session. Looks good.